It's me, MC of Help Me By George. I come every Sunday and Friday. We're changing to Friday because I think for my work schedule and doing all the research, Friday's going to be an easier day for me. So we're coming on Sundays and Fridays. I think that'll be more doable. So today, what I want to talk about is microdosing of the GLP-1 drugs or the GLP, GIP drugs. And this is Healthy by George. I'm here every Sunday and Friday. So please subscribe. I'd love to see you here with me. I'd love to join in conversations about our health and wellness to focus on how we can stay healthier and live longer so that we're functioning well into our older years. So today I want to talk about microdosing because it seems to be the big topic that everyone has on their mind and people are sharing. And I think it's useful if we talk about what is microdosing of these drugs. It can be one of two things. If you're someone who's going through some of the, what I would call the compound pharmacies, where you're getting a vial and syringes, you can figure out a smaller amount of drug than what you are typically diagnosed with weight loss, or if you're doing this for diabetes, that you would be taking a drug dose that's recommended and prescribed. But some people are doing this idea of cutting that amount in half and doing a very small dose, or they're doing this idea of extending the time frame. So in other words, they take a dose if they've got one of those pre-filled syringes and instead of doing it every seven days, they do it every maybe 10 days or 12 days or 14 days. And I think people are doing this for one or two reasons. One, it's expensive. If you're paying for this out of pocket, you want to make those four syringes or that vial of drug last as long as you possibly can. And while that seems to be reasonable, the truth is that this is not any way to deal with taking a medication. Now, granted, there is this concept that there might be some benefit to microdosing, but I think it's still something that's not been discovered for through research or through a practical approach of understanding how it works. So you're really rolling the dice on whether it's going to be effective for you or not. And so doing this type of approach where you're just like taking this on your own and not doing it in collaboration with a doctor, you're really doing this kind of in an off-label approach where what you're doing with the medication is unknown. And I think that's difficult. And I think it's not wise unless you can do it with someone who understands what you're doing is a doctor. And I think sometimes when people are thinking about microdosing, they're doing it for several reasons. One, as something that I'm thinking of is as you approach your goal weight, do you need a full dose to continue to maintain? It's unknown. I think the other thing is that there are these side effects that you get from nausea and constipation and upset stomach and gas and bloating and indigestion. Maybe a smaller dose than what's normal can help with those types of side effects until you stabilize. I've heard that that's a, an approach. Some people they want a slower pace of weight loss and they want to make the drug last longer for what they're paying. And so they think of slowing down the process so that they're not taking the drug as frequently as it's prescribed. I think some people are worried about shortages. I think some people are really just wanting a mild approach to the reduction of weight loss or appetite instead of going after a full blown, I want to lose two and three pounds a week. So I think there's a lot of concerns and we really have to work with our healthcare providers because they can't help you if you're not taking a medication in the way that it's prescribed. And I understand that some people feel very challenged by this because either they 
they don't want to share with the doctors about their issues around money or they don't feel comfortable or they're afraid someone's going to stop prescribing it if they talk about microdosing. And I think everyone's different and everyone's relationship with their doctor is different and everybody's body is different. And even if something has been well studied in a research study, we still will be discovering how that drug works on ourselves by interacting with it. And so everyone is different. And so when you do the research or when the research is done, it comes up with kind of a generalizable amount of information that shares the positives and the negatives. And I think that's the key is that the positives and the negatives, and we are learning, and I am suspecting that microdosing of this medicine may be beneficial in the future, but I'm not sure it's something that we should go about doing on our own. It's not useful to do this without talking to your healthcare professional first. It's not safe. We don't understand what the long-term effects of microdosing might be. There might be some kind of effect that if you've been microdosing over a period of time, that you may not really get a true benefit from this medicine. I think also, too, that you are challenging your body in a way that we're not understanding. And then how can I, if a physician is going to work with you, if we know or learn that you're microdosing, how can we help you when we don't really know what you've been taking? Because perhaps you've not been really precise or exact when you're measuring the medicine in the syringe. This is not just taking a, a supplement over the counter. This is a real prescribed medicine that has serious consequences and can end you in the hospital with some very challenging gastrointestinal problems because it slows down the gut. And you don't really want to be messing around with the amount of medicine that you're going to take because you really want to be safe. You want to be safe. You want to preserve your body's functioning. You want to work with your body. You don't want to go against it. And while microdosing sounds like a way to solve the solution of maybe wanting to stretch your drug further and you don't really feel like you can afford paying the several hundred dollars a month just to do the four, four syringes, you make it last six weeks maybe because you've spread it out. I really don't think that's something you can do without talking to your doctor. Having a frank conversation with your doctor is so useful. I know that's the approach I go with. If I can't go and talk to my doctor honestly about what I want to do or think about doing, whether it's a supplement or an exercise program or things that will help me, I think that we're doing a disservice if you don't have a doctor that you can really speak to frankly. And I think you should, if you are really considering microdosing, bring it up with your doctor, have that conversation. Perhaps there is some, because believe me, lots of doctors prescribe medicines off label. Microdosing in this context is considered off label. In other words, what does that mean? It's not the label that has been approved by the FDA for what this drug is supposed to do, is approved to do by the FDA. And I think that's the key, is that you can use something off-label. Many drugs are used off-label by doctors. And I think if you want to have a conversation about microdosing, for various reasons with your doctor, you might find that your doctor is open to that discussion and they're open to work with you to figure out an off-label approach of using this drug in your circumstances. Just because it's something that you feel like you'd like to try, I do recommend that you speak to your doctor about it because Things are changing with this drug. We're learning a great deal about how this drug helps our bodies, how this drug really does turn off that kind of chatter in our brain that is thinking about food or 
contemplating food or it's some kind of just churning about food and when I'm going to eat again or or it doesn't get that sense of satiety. I know for me, when I first started taking this medicine, I recognized, <coughs> excuse me, that it helped me right away, immediately. That feeling of thinking about food totally went away. And the other thing that was so surprising is I felt satisfied faster which I totally never recalled having that experience before. So when you're thinking about using these drugs, <coughs> excuse me, the allergy season is really getting me. When you're thinking about using these drugs and you do want to address, can you use a smaller dose? Can you go slower? Work with your doctor. Talk to them frankly about what you're thinking and what's possible. I think you might find that you can find a way to discuss this openly and come together with a decision that'll make both you and your doctor happy about the care that you're getting and the potential benefit that you'll get from microdosing if that's what y'all consider doing going forward or exploring what happens if you extend the dose instead of taking it every seven days, take it every 10 or 12 days. Discuss it with your doctor. I don't promote this because I think everyone's relationship with their doctor is what's most important. I know I take my relationships with my doctors very important. I'm starting a new primary care doctor again in June, which is discouraging, but this is what happens. You get one primary care doctor and then they decide to move and now you're getting a second one. That's what we have to do for our care. So be well, my friends. If you're thinking about using a GLP-1 drug and weight loss or dealing with your post, your menopausal hormone issues, talk about it with your doctor. I think you can't go wrong. <coughs> Man, I have such a terrible tickle. <coughs> so think about it with your doctor and talk about it frankly and see if you can come up with something that makes both of you happy. Be well, my friends. We have this one precious life. Let's live it to the fullest so that we live longer and we're functioning well into our older age. See you next time. It's me, MC, and think about subscribing here at Healthy by George. I'd love to see you. Bye-bye. So thank you so much for joining me at Healthy by George. I hope you found the information inspiring and that it encourages you on your wellness journey. Because remember, your body, your well-being are a most precious gift. And every tiny action taken daily can make a huge difference. I hope the information here is educational purposes and is not meant to replace your medical care. See your doctor and talk about what works for you. If you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Your support means the world to me, and it helps me continuing creating content that inspires and empowers you to live your best life. Goodbye for now, and join me again at the next Healthy by George.